Hey, Crux here with Sin Shop. Uh, we just got the underside of the P2P11. The casters tore off of there. So these are actually kind of interesting. Uh, so there's, they sit on a pin like so. And then this is a big rubber bushing, which kind of acts as a uh, rudimentary uh, shock absorber so that was kind of interesting design there on the, on the base of the PDP-11 we got four convenient mount points so that's where we're going to bolt on to our uh, frame we'll have to make a equivalent of this for some reason there was only two of these and it's not really the bolt size I want and it's kind of cruddy so um, probably take a plate of steel you know drill all through there and just weld on a uh, nut and uh, that'll just slide in there like that and then we can put the, the frame on the bottom side bolt on the bottom and we'll be good to go so we have the PDP-11 on its side here uh, just so we could get to the underside of it and uh, take the casters off and uh, there's a metal bar that we had to take off on the bottom of it and that will allow us to set it down uh, on the frame for the robot chassis. Um, some interesting things of note here. The It is not square hole or round hole. It's well Round hole typically is a threaded hole, and square hole is typically a square hole that you have a little uh, uh, caged nut that clips in. This is some abomination between the two. So it is a round hole, but it's not threaded, and you have to have the caged nut 
that kind of clips over on the side. So kind of the worst of both worlds, but uh, it does make things difficult for mounting on this just because we don't have the hardware uh, required to do that. So I might have to uh, be creative there and uh, make some of my own cage nuts. So we have the PDP-11 out of the uh, chassis uh, just so we can get all of the stuff out of there and, and actually get it mounted without having all the weight of the computer itself. Um, so this is basically the, the CPU part and then under here is a MFM uh, drive cage that we built. Uh, kind of a tour of the PP11. You have the power supply here. Um, cooling fans. You can see the massive caps that they're using for the power supply. The cards sit in there like so. And spin this around. I can get a better view. Your diagnostics board. Um, there's our MFM controller. There is a serial board. And that is RAM. <laughs> and then that is the CPU board itself. So the actual PDP 11 CPU is that. Go ahead and pull some of these out for you. Better look at the CPU board. Underside. And then this is our RAM. It has 192K of RAM. Which isn't a whole hell of a lot. You can crash the uh, system just by doing too much. Serial board, and this one it's interesting because to set the speed, you actually have to wire up wires to set the speed of each of these. Uh, this board here is our MFM controller. That uses a 50 pin connector, which we had to make a breakout board to get that into the actual FM drives. This board here is another serial board, um, but I don't believe we actually got it working. And then the last board down here, which I won't pull out because it's a pain to get back in, is basically the diagnostics board. So there's EPROMs in set positions on there uh, for running various uh, diagnostics programs and basically gets the system booted up essentially. Um, so that's there's the back panel so the uh, top connector is for the uh, RL02 drives we're not actually running those um, just because we couldn't get them working and then these are for your serial connections and that's for the Ethernet connection which we'll have to try to get working at some point as well so that's a full stack of other boards uh, Somewhere, I have to dig them up. But uh, that's that's the uh, PDP I'm in tear down. And if you have any questions, we can try to dig up the answers for you. So here is our MFM chassis. So two MFM drives are there. So right there and right there, and then there are. Uh, switches to do write enable and drive enable for each of the drives. Those are 
under there. And there's a power breakout board. And then that goes into our custom board that we uh, made up to go from the 50 pin connector into your MFM drives. The MFM drive controller in theory can run four MFM drives, um, but we only really saw good documentation on how to get two working. So there are two. And then there's a hookup for one of the floppy controllers. Um, but I don't think we're going to be using those, so let me uh, laser cut the uh, fan mount here. And that's just a standard PC power supply, nothing fancy to it. Um, one the cool thing though, is if we power it on, it's backlit. So that's all we have for this update. Thanks for watching. Check us out over at sinshop.org and we'll see you next time.